La ilaha, la ilaha, illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha, la ilaha, illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha, la ilaha, illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. <clears throat> One day a man came to Al Fudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah and Al Fudayl asked him how old he was. Now the man said that he was over 60 years old. And Al Fudayl um, said to him, Do you know that for the last 60 years of your life you've been traveling to the hereafter and you're almost about to arrive? So the man responded by saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. But Al Fudayl kind of got angry that he said that. He said, Do you even know what that means? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He said, Whoever understands that they belong to Allah and that they're going to be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have to understand that they're going to die one day. And if they understand that they're going to die one day, that means that they understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold them accountable for their deeds. And if they understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold them accountable for their deeds, that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to stop them and ask them about their deeds. And whoever knows that they're going to be asked for their deeds, they need to be preparing from now. And then the man said, then what should I do? <coughs> And Al-Fudayr rahimahullah, he said, do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from now, correct your years, whatever many years you have left, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive these years and the years that came before. But if you don't correct your situation now, you'll be held accountable for these final years and all the years that came before. Now dear brothers and sisters, in Hajj time, when a person goes for Hajj, in the olden days there was a group of people who used to go for Hajj and would not prepare any money to go. They would basically just get on the caravan, go for Hajj, and on the way to Hajj they would beg and they would ask people for money. And everywhere they would go they would say, you know, feed us, you know, give us accommodation, give us this, this and that. And then they would claim they would say, نَحْنُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ That we are the ones who have placed our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah refuted what they did in the Qur'an. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَزَوَّدُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that when somebody goes for Hajj and Umrah of course, وَتَزَوَّدُوا means pack your bags and fill your bank accounts before you go. Don't go begging people when you go for, for Hajj or Umrah. What to Zawadu? Now, this also, there's, there's a two, two parts to this. Preparing your bag is not just about preparing financially for the journey, but it's also about preparing your heart for the journey too. Because right from the beginning of the journey to, to the end in the desert, when you start traveling, there's no place that you can stop to refill. You have to have what you need in your caravans from the beginning to the end of your destination, which is very similar to the hereafter. Because once you arrive in the hereafter, there's no, you know, a masjid on the way to Jannah where you can do some extra rak'ahs on your way as you're moving forward. Once you're dead, once you've died, as all of us died, you have to have your bags fully filled for every test that's coming in the hereafter, with the sun coming down and crossing the sirat and, and, and the walls that will be divided and passing, everything you need is in your bags. And it's, it's a scary thought. I'm thinking of my bags and we think of our bags. How much is in our bags of good deeds, our suitcases of good deeds, for this huge journey to the hereafter where we need to prepare from the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى That the verily the best zad, the best thing you can be packing in your suitcases is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now the Prophet وسلم, said how we should travel in this in this earth. Prophet وسلم, said, Kun fi dunya ka gharib abiru sabil. Act in this dunya as if you are a traveler. abiru sabil. Or just somebody that's just passing by. You don't actually live in the area, you're just passing by. And there's an attitude that a traveler has, and I'm gonna bring it in a second. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu is explaining this hadith, he narrates it to his students, and then he says um, to his students what this means, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ If you find yourself in the, in the daytime, don't expect to be alive by nighttime. Meaning that your actions, you should act as if this is your last day on earth. Because one of the things that kills everybody is that we think that we have so much time. So we say to ourselves, I'll do this tomorrow. One day, inshallah, I will do this. One day, I'll, I'll, I'll repent to Allah. One day, I'll this, this, and that. But there's no time like that. Acting in this life as if you're a traveler, that's the attitude that you don't wait for the evening to get your work done. And then Ibn Umar anhu says, وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْطَذِرِ الصَّلَاحِ And if you find yourself in the evening, don't wait till the morning to do what you need to do. <clears throat> now, alhamdulillah, we're, um, you might see by my accent that I'm not from Glasgow. I'm not going to attempt to do a Glasgow accent. Alhamdulillah, we've come uh, on a bus and uh, for the al Maghrib Institute. We're going from city to city. We're doing lectures in different masajid. And inshallah ta'ala, um, tomorrow there's going to be a, a conference here in Glasgow. But in this journey, and for the brothers that came with me on the bus, and, and for all of us to understand, how does someone act when they're traveling? One thing that I noticed very clearly is that there is not a, we don't, a, a traveler, and you've been in situations like that, when you know you have to leave very soon, you don't spend too much time compiling worldly things. So nobody in our group, for example, said, I need to go to the furniture store and buy some furniture and, 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 and buy excessive things. Everybody who's actually in the journey, I'm sure at some point they would say, I wish I had brought less things with me. And I, and I, and I said that to myself, I wish I had brought something smaller, something more lighter that could, that could take me in this journey. So you're always focused on tomorrow and where you have to go towards and you're not so focused and concerned about just today because you know it's just fleeting and it's gonna go it's gonna pass by when Adam and Hawa السلام, our mother and father imagine and that they have Jannah and then they brought to to the earth think of the comparison between the two from Jannah to the earth they would cry and cry longing to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm sure they told their children about this. And their children told their children and the prophets came and told everybody. Along the line people forgot that this Jannah is our actual home. Not the places that we're living in. And so whenever somebody is aiming for you know, a spouse or a home that they want to purchase, they should always remember ultimately the decisions that they should make should not conflict with their home in Jannah. Because that's ultimately where a person wants to lead. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that um, the dunya is, has gotten up and it's walking away from you. Each day as we go by and as I look over these beautiful faces, some of us are further in the journey, some of us are still younger in the journey, but we're all on this journey. And the dunya, every, there's not a single one of us except that the dunya has turned its back and it's walking away from you. And this earth was occupied by other people a few years ago, and in a few years it's going to be occupied by other people. And life will go on. As much as we think that we're so important, life will go on, it's not going to stop because we're, we're here or we're not here. But the akhirah has stood up and is walking towards you. So if the dunya is walking away, with each day you got another day to live, you're only just one more day closer to the akhirah. And people say, when is, the, when is the final hour? In fact, the final hour is one heartbeat away from you. Because the moment your heart stops, then al-qiyamatu suhra begins for you, the, the minor resurrection. 
and all the things of the angels extracting the soul. So akhirah is one heartbeat away from a person um, going towards that. <clears throat> Muhammad ibn Wasi'a, rahimahullah, is, uh, somebody asked him, you know, how are you? Kayfa asbahat? How do we normally answer those questions? How are you? Not too bad. I'm good. He said, Muhammad ibn Wasi'a, rahimahullah, he said, what do you think of somebody who, who woke up this morning one step closer to the hereafter? أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ورسائل المسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور If you can move forward, inshallah, I'll make room for you, brothers and sisters. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد. This journey to the hereafter, whenever somebody is um, making their goals or what they're aiming for, ultimately you look at what the prophets عليهم السلام. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's number one goal, and this is something you know as in my own life trying to see what are the things I should aim for, I wish to find out what the Prophet ﷺ would aim for, so that I can emulate him. And I assume that the things that the Prophet ﷺ aimed for are the things that he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. So when you look in the dua, and I'll tell you two things that I learned from the dua very quickly, is something that the Prophet ﷺ used to ask Allah Azza for so much, so much. And that was istighfar. You can't, the very rarely can you find a dua of the Prophet ﷺ authentic, except that he asked Allah for forgiveness. The companions that Allah Allah them, they'd say, they would sit with the Prophet ﷺ, and they would count how many times he asked Allah for forgiveness. And they'd say, we might count 70 or 100 times <coughs> that the Prophet ﷺ in one jalsa is just sitting, and he would ask Allah for forgiveness up to 100 times. The Prophet ﷺ said, Tubu ila Allahi wa astaghfiru. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for forgiveness. Fa inni atubu fil yawmi mi'ata marra. For verily, I ask Allah for forgiveness in a day a hundred times. And in some narrations, more than a hundred times. This is something that I saw is number one, one of the top things on the Prophet Wasallam's mind on a consistent basis day is asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, and here's just a little point, a lot of times we think forgiveness is only asked when you do something wrong. The Prophet Wasallam didn't do anything wrong to be asking for forgiveness, but if you notice in Salah, when you finish your Salah, say, Assalamu the first thing you say is, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. That's right after you finished your salah. And so a lesson we learn about istighfar is also um, to humble ourselves in the good deeds that we do so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept them. So istighfar is also, it's our humility. We just did a good deed. Our reaction could be, mashallah, I'm so good. I did you know, so many good deeds. But rather, the attitude that we learn from the Prophet sallam, is istighfar, um, is to repent. And then... The, the second thing that I want to bring up about the Prophet ﷺ's dua is a key dua that he made in his final words before he died ﷺ. And I think ultimately that should be the dua everybody should have on their tongue. The Prophet ﷺ's final words were, Allahumma fir rafiq al-a'la. O oh Allah, join me with the highest companionship in Jannah. So if that's the Prophet Sallallahu final words, and you'll actually see this repeated, um, Yusuf السلام, you know, وَالْحِقْمَةَ مَعَ الْأَبْرَى The Prophet Sallallahu said, um, you know, he's fasting and he's eating somebody's food, he would say, أَكَلَ طَعَمُكُمُ الْأَبْرَى May righteous people, basically, to be in the companionship of Ahl jannah people, uh, Abra, to be in companionship. That's the Prophet Sallallahu ultimate goal. His final words to make dua for. And so we too, when we say what are the things that we're aiming for in our lives, of course we care about dunya things, getting married and um, taking care of our kids and, and having a good home and all of these things. 
But we have to remember that our number one goal ultimately should be فِرَّفِيقِ الْأَعْلَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters us into Jannatul Firdaus. As the Prophet وسلم, said, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, ask Him for Al Firdaus. That you ask the highest level of Jannah and you aim for it. And just with that attitude, inshaAllah ta'ala, you'll be living your life like a traveler, where your focus truly is on that destination, not right now, but on the destination to be in Jannatul Firdaus, Ma'an Nabiyyina wa Siddiqina wa Shuhada'i wa Salihin wa Hasuna Ula'ika Rafiqa. In conclusion, inshaAllah, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was once standing at a grave. He was once standing at a grave and contemplating, and he had somebody beside him. And he said to his, his friend, he said, if this person got a chance to come back to the dunya, so resurrected, brought back, here's their second chance, everybody wants for a second chance, let's suppose he gets the second chance. What do you think he would do? So his friend said that he would, do, uh, would be completely focused on good deeds. Be focused on the hereafter, focused on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from the sins, staying away from disobeying Allah Azza, all the things that we know how a person should act. But he would be emphasized, focused. And then Imam uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said to him, if it's not going to be him who's going to come back, then let it be you. Let it be you, the one who's acting as if every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you another chance to come back, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do these good deeds. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, my name is Muhammad al-Sharif and with me inshallah ta'ala in, in uh, Glasgow this weekend, tomorrow inshallah ta'ala, we have uh, some shiuk from different areas around the world that have come together for our al Maghrib Institute Ilm Fest here in Glasgow. If you're um, not registered for it inshallah ta'ala, we'd love to have you there. It's going to be a whole day of you know, something very memorable, inshallah ta'ala. That's Ilm Fest, Glasgow. Inna Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayuhal ladhina amnu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Wa baraka ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Fi al-alamin innaka hamidun majid Allahumma aghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina Wa shahidina wa ghaibina Wa saghirina wa kabirina Wa dhakarina wa anthana Allahumma من أحيته منا فأحي على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون I wonder if I'll be good today I Didn't you So why am I afraid to pass away? Someday a spark that fire I'm a star